to raise money for environmental groups. Well, there's a lot more money on the other side. You want to balance money against money, whatever the green groups are raising. There's a lot more money to continue to drill, to continue mine coal. That's where the big money is. So if you want to take the, the money route, that's where you'd go. But now there's just too many world scientists who study climate, uh, you know, and they agree that we have a real problem with the amount of CO2 that's in the atmosphere. And that tipping point is now. We have to take action now. And we're not going to save everything. If we stopped emitting CO2 now, there's enough in the pipeline that we cannot stop. We're, we're still going to have consequences. It's a matter of mitigating the damage at this point. So it's not scare tact tactics. It's good science. Good science from NOAA, from NASA, from National Geographic. Lots of people out there who know about such things have been talking about this for a while, and they have many knowledgeable people with the letters PhD after their name, many peer-reviewed studies that show that we have a real problem. It's not scare anymore. So uh, is it true that they've known about this for 50 years and we could have prevented this? There, was, there have been many theories about climate. There was a, a cooling theory that was promoted some years ago. It didn't get much traction. It made it to Popular Science magazine, I believe. That's about as far as it got. It didn't make anywhere near the kind of impact that the global warming theory made uh, some years later. Uh, most notably by James Hansen in 1987. He spoke before the Senate and uh, I think a joint session of Congress perhaps and talked about global warming and the threat that it was and people thought he was just some scientist trying to scare us or being an alarmist. And uh, But uh, we could have listened in 1987. He had very credible evidence back then and he had a, a mild, a medium, and an extreme three different scenarios on a, a chart and even the medium one had dire consequences. So he was recommending action to mitigate our use of CO2. You know, it takes millions of years to make coal and crude oil. Why would you want to blow through that material in just a few hundred years to have a quick party and wreck the joint and leave it for our children and grandchildren to clean up? You can use fossil fuels for valuable things like making eyeglasses and computers and medical equipment. You don't need to use it all in inefficient vehicles blown out the tailpipe. So uh, I, I have nothing against crude oil and its refined products. You know, just stop wasting it. You know, there are other ways. You can get power from the sun. You can get power from the wind. You can get power from the earth in the form of geothermal power. These things work and they're working today. Emphasize that. Cut back drastically on the use of fossil fuels and uh, you'll have a much brighter tomorrow. Extinction. Extinction is forever. There's a wonderful movie out called Racing Extinction that details some of uh, the cases that have occurred already where different birds have gone extinct, different creatures of every stripe have gone extinct, and uh, I think it's worth seeing a racing extinction. But we are right now racing extinction ourselves. We're losing more plant and animal species than we ever have in greater numbers. Keep in mind, there's always been extinctions. Extinctions at a certain number occur naturally but we're at a hundred times, a thousand times the norm now of the rate of extinction when creatures go the way of the dodo. Um, and we're so far beyond that, it's a great deal of risk. You have to ask yourself, how many rivets can you lose from an airplane before it ceases to fly? And all those many species are like rivets in an airplane holding the fuselage and the wings together. And you can lose, I don't know how many, somebody who knows about planes would tell me, five, 10, 30? But at some point when you lose too many, the plane's going to start coming apart as you fly and you're going to crash. And that's where we're at now. We're losing too many rivets, too many valuable species that we need to stay alive. So are these life forms really that important though? Who's going to miss them if we don't even know they exist? Well, again, they're for our own well-being uh, as well as theirs. Uh, you know, there's a web of life that supports us all. If you have a healthy ecosystem, you yourself can have a healthy life. When you have an ecosystem out of balance, you, you have real problems. People have vilified many species over the years and you know people used to shoot buffalo out of moving trains, not even stopping the train to pick up the carcass and, and eat the meat that was lying there on the floor of the plains. People have behaved poorly. We almost lost the buffalo. Um, uh, now, you know, we lose lots of species, plant and animal species, on a regular basis, and it's not as obvious as shooting them from a, 
a moving train, it's just it's more subtle, but they are part of the ecosystem that keeps us alive. And to not value that, I mean, when you have things out of balance, you, you have trouble. There's a lot of loss of sharks now. People go, sharks, they're horrible, they eat people. So few people are harmed or eaten by sharks in any given year. It's, you know, you have a better chance of being hit by lightning by a long shot. Um, but sharks play an important part in the ocean. They keep the ocean in balance. And so to kill all the sharks as we're doing for shark fin soup, to just hack off the fin and throw them back in to be tortured and die, unable to swim properly, is just, uh, it's barbaric. And in so doing, we're also putting the ocean ecosystem out of balance. We're putting the ocean ecosystem out of balance with all the plastic in the ocean, all this single-use plastic it is just taking over our lives. And I, again, I'm not talking about everything made out of plastic is bad. bad. You can have glasses and you can have computers and things made with plastic, but you don't throw a, pu a computer in the ocean. You don't throw your glasses in the ocean but lots of wrappers and bottles and bags and things blow out of trash cans. They blow out of recycling bins too. The wind takes them or somehow somebody's reckless with it. They go into a landfill and they're blown by wind into our waterways, oceans, our bays, our estuaries, and birds choke on them, fish choke on them, marine mammals choke on them, and it's killing the, it's killing the ocean, the amount of plastic in the ocean. It's all part of the, the big challenge that we're gonna face with our oceans, the acidification of the oceans, these are real problems, and we have to face that now, or we're going to pay the price. Tree hugger. Oh, okay. Go ahead, buddy. Great stuff, though. Understood. Thank you. And I've only got a couple more minutes, Kurt. I got to go. Understood. Tree hugger. Tree hugger is. Tree hugger. Uh, I'm a uh, self-avowed tree hugger. I wear that name with honor. Uh, I think trees are important, and I'll hug one any day of the week. They don't hug you back, but uh, I get a good feeling when I do it because I know trees have tremendous value in my life, and they have since I was born, since long before I was born. Uh, so I, I value trees, and we'll give them a hug any day of the week. You've been a role model for any, for many. What is the message if someone wanted to walk in your footsteps and, and do what you do? How do you lead by example? Do everything that you can afford to live sustainably. A lot of people make up that list of things that I'm doing that they cannot do. I can't afford a fancy electric car like Ed drives. I can't afford a big solar array on my rooftop. I say to them, neither could I when I started. What can you do? Make up the more interesting list, the more important list of things that you can do. Energy saving thermostat, weather stripping around your doors and windows, energy efficient light bulbs, unplug all that vampire power that's costing you money and wasting, it's not doing anything. Uh, bike riding when weather and fit fitness permit, public transportation if it's available near you, home gardening, home composting, Everything that I just mentioned is very cheap. Do those cheap things now, you will make a difference, and simplify your life as best you can. Live simply so that others can simply live. Okay, I'm going to stop in just a second.